Hello brothers and sisters in Christ, God bless you. I hope everyone and everybody's doing okay. God bless you and your families. Thank you for joining in. How is everybody? Can you hear me? Is my sound loud and clear? Is my sound loud and clear? Give me a one if you can hear me, guys. Thank you for the confirmation. God bless you. Let us start, guys, by saying it's showtime. Short but sweet, right? This time. I mean, come on. <laughs> Hope everybody is doing okay, guys. God bless you and your families. Today is going to be another topic that we will discuss, and it's going to be the <clears throat> punishment of the grave in Islam. Muslims are scared to death because of the punishment of the grave, guys. You know, they know when they are going to die, something will await them and it will be the punishment of the grave. So when they are, when they die, they will be buried and we're going to discuss today what that will be. So before we start, guys, before we start, let us do a nice prayer together. Let's just pray together so we'll be guided through today's teaching. Pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, please forgive our daily sins and guide us to learn how to forgive others first. People who might curse us or persecute us because we are Christians. We are followers of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Please, Lord, give us the courage and wisdom. Give us some guidance so we can overcome lies, taqiyya and deceptions. Enfold us in your arms, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we might reflect your light within this dark, sad world. And that we speak your word with boldness and draw others to your feet, Lord. We ask this through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Please, Lord, give us the courage today and always to do whatever needs to be done for the truth, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So like we said on this live broadcast today, we'll have the opportunity to talk about the punishment of the grave that Muslims are so terrified from. Last but not least, when I finish my te teaching today, we will have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat. You can go ahead and ask me questions about today's topic. In other words, you can ask me questions about the teaching and I will try to answer as far as I can. Hopefully there will be also Muslims who are watching, listening, and they can call us live on Skype for a nice and respectful discussion. My Skype ID is the Rob Christians. The Rob Christian. Let us start, guys. Again, welcome. God bless. Like I said, as you see here, this is a sheikh. His name is Mufti Menka, I believe. And like him and many other shiuch and imams love to talk about the punishment of the grave. What is actually the punishment of the grave? That's our topic today. But before we go there, let us do a nice introduction. So let us go to a hadith. To a hadith. To see what Muhammad is saying about how people die and what about himself. He loves to talk about himself. And every time he speaks and opens up his mouth, he basically spanks himself. Read with me. This is Sunan Abi Daud. 
Sahih hadith, Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. Sunnah Nabi Daud, hadith number 1531. Hadith number 1531. Let me give you the link also. Hopefully, we will have also admins who will help us out today. Let's see if they will join us later. So, let us read this hadith, guys. Sunan Abi Daud, hadith number 1531. Among the most excellent of your days if is Friday, so invoke many blessings on me. Wait a second. Aha. Guys, there's nothing called blessings in the Arabic. You see how they are lying in the translation? You see how they are lying in the translation? Let me prove it to you guys. The word is not blessing. Can someone tell me what the word in Arabic is for blessings? What is blessings in Arabic, guys? Help me to help you. What is the meaning of blessings in Arabic? No, no, no. No, Dark Knight, no. You got it wrong. Dark Knight got it wrong. Anyone? Baraka, thank you. Barakat, thank you. So the word is barakat. Now if you go to the Arabic, here it says something else. Now if we copy this word and we go to Prophet Google, peace be upon him. Uh oh. Same word. You see what it means? You see it? Prayer. So the actual word is prayer. So Muhammad is asking the Abduls to invoke many prayers on him. So they are asking basically Allah to pray on Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. So Allah needs to pray. They have to invoke Allah so that Allah can pray on Muhammad. For your prayers, there's nothing called blessing, right? For your prayers will be submitted to me. Sounds like a nice little mushrik prophet, right? This is paganism, right? So if we continue, they, the companions ask, Messenger of Allah, how can our prayers, nothing called blessings, right? How can our prayers be submitted to you. So they are starting to getting confused. Doubts, right? Hey, wait a second. How can our prayers be submitted to you when your body has the gate? So the Abduls are asking their prophet, how can our prayers be submitted to you when your body starts to rot in your grave? When you die, right? So your body will rot. And Muhammad's answer is, he, Muhammad said, Allah praying on him, right? When you see this, that means Allah is praying on Muhammad. But we always ask Muslims, when Allah prays, to who Allah prays? We don't know. They ha don't have the answer. So Muhammad said, Allah has prohibited the earth from consuming the bodies of the prophets. Uh-oh. This is a really big, nasty claim. Why? Why? Here is why, guys. We are going to spank Muhammad and refute him. Right? We're going to spank Muhammad and refute this silly scam, this silly lie. Oof, oof, oof. Yeah, where is Christian Prince, guys? Someone needs to call Christian Prince. Oof, oof, oof. Let us see if Muhammad actually is speaking the truth. If we go to a hadith, Al Abbas, the uncle of Muhammad, busted Muhammad. Now watch. Al Abbas, the paternal uncle, the uncle of Muhammad, entered Muhammad's room. Watch guys, pay attention. Three after his death. So, so the uncle of Muhammad entered the room after the death of Muhammad. Before the burial of Muhammad, as his body remained there for three days. So the Abduls, the companions of Muhammad, didn't bury the body of Muhammad for three days. 
as the people were too busy to bury him. So they were basically confused. Shall we bury him? Uh, I mean, he said that his body will not decay, right? Right? He's trying to copy Jesus. But anyway, as all of them were engaged in debates of al Thaqifa council of choosing a ruler, a caliph of Yathrib to succeed him. So they were busy to choose the successor of Muhammad. In this case, Abu Bakr. Remember the story? So they chose Abu Bakr to be the first caliph after the death of Muhammad. Once Al-Abbas, pay attention guys, once Al-Abbas, the uncle of Muhammad, entered the room, he puts his hands at once at his nose. Why? Because he smelled the stinking body, the rotting body of Muhammad. Oof, oof, oof! Ew! Saying the uncle of Muhammad. Ew! And said to the gathered men outside. So he went and he said to the people outside, Bury your friend Muhammad fast, for his body began decomposition, decaying, rotting, just like the rest of human beings. Uh oh. So here, his own uncle, Al Abbas, busted the lies of Muhammad. Ew. He's thinking. You know, when you, when you have a dead guy, you know, his body starts to rot. Uh, he will fart, you know. The body, you know, a lot of gas will come out, right? I mean, I don't want you to have a a dream uh, about Muhammad tonight, but you know, you see, you see the, you, you can imagine the picture, right? So, the uncle of Muhammad, Al Abbas, refutes the silly claim of Muhammad. Muhammad is nothing but a liar, right? This is why they actually didn't want to bury him, right? In the first place. But no, there's no miracle. Muhammad, his body started to stink like everyone's body, right? When we die, our body will decay. It will decompose, right? So you see how uh, Muhammad lied and how he got spanked by his own family? Now, if we go to the, to the Bible, guys, if we go to Joshua, if we go to Joshua 24, verses 31, 33. Let me play the, the verse for you. Listen, guys. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that overlived Joshua and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, buried they in Shechem, in a parcel of ground which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for an hundred pieces of silver. And it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. So you hear it, guys. The bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought out of Egypt, buried they in Shechem, in parts of the ground which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamor. So as you see, guys, Muhammad not only lied in the hadith, saying that Allah prohibited the earth from consuming the bodies of the Prophet, not is he also spanked and refuted by his own uncle and family that his body actually did start to decay. Now he's lying about the rest of the prophets from the Bible. So as you see, it's talking, the Bible here is talking about the bones of Joseph, right? So the bones of the prophets were buried. So as you see, actually the bodies of the true prophets also decayed. You see how Muhammad contradicted the rest of the prophets. Now, can you be a true prophet and contradict other prophets? What a liar, what a deceiver, what a scam. All right? Lying. Filthy, disgusting, satanic prophet. Lying about the true prophets. You see how Muhammad actually stuck try to lift himself up to be equal with Allah. Yesterday we mentioned chapter 48, ayah 9, right? How Muslims are commanded in the Quran to worship and glorify Muhammad. Chapter 48, ayah 9. And here again, Muhammad is trying to copy Jesus, right? 
He's trying to copy Jesus. Lying about the true prophets because all the prophets died and their bodies decayed. And the proof is in front of you. Let me give you the link from the Bible. Guys, copy and paste them, save them. And let me give you also this link from this website that you can use. And this is the hadith that I just read from. Copy it, bookmark it, use it, guys. Help me to help you, right? So here we spank Muhammad's lies that actually the bodies of the prophets did decay. So he's nothing but a liar and a deceiver. Let us continue. If we go to Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith number 13, 78 hadith number 1378 if we read the following the prophet once this is by the way from the cousin of muhammad reporting this narrated by ibn abbas the prophet once passed by two grave and said they the deceased persons in those grave are being tortured not for a great thing to avoid so muhammad is saying the bodies or these people are being tortured in their graves for not actually really a big thing, but it's for a small thing. Let us see what, what that small thing is, according to Muhammad. So you are being tortured as a Muslim in your grave for this following thing. And then added, yes, they are being punished for a big sin. Now, is it for a small thing or for a big thing? I mean, come on, man. Be consistent here, Muhammad. Is it a big thing or not a big thing? Oof, oof, oof. How can someone be a donkey and refute himself in just in the second sentence? Anyway, this is Muhammad. Whenever he speaks, he got busted. So, for one of them used to go about with calumnies, while the other never saved himself from being soiled with his urine. So, guys, one of the reasons why you get punished in the grave as a Muslim, because you are soiling yourself with urine. Oof, oof, oof. Because of urine, guys, you are getting punished in the grave. Ibn Abbas added, then he took a green leaf for a date palm and split it into pieces and fixed one piece and each grave and said, may their punishment be abated till these two pieces get dry. So you are getting punished guys because you are peeing yourselves. So watch out. This must be a true story guys. True story. There is no other reason. <laughs> I mean, you can go steal, you can go uh, murder someone. But if you saw yourself, you get punished in, in the grave, according to Muhammad. Right? And if we go to the next hadith, narrated Abu Huraira from Bulugh al-Maram, hadith number 103. Allah's Messenger said, beware of smearing yourselves with urine. See? So there's not only one hadith, there are many hadith talking about urine. Because it is the main cause, you catch it? It's the main cause of being punished in the grave. You catch it? Another hadith, Bulugh al-Maram, hadith number 104. And Al-Hakim reported that urination is the main cause of punishment in the grave. Its chain of narrators is authentic. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. Madness. Someone is saying, man, I mean, come on, man. Don't laugh. This is serious business in Islam, man. Muslims have to believe in this. When you soil yourself, when you pee yourself, you, you don't clean, right? That is the main cause of punishment in the grave. So if you have a child or you have grown up men who pee in their beds, I mean, they will be punished in their graves, man. Disgusting, man.
There's no other reason than for being punished by Allah. Except for, uh, you know. Mom, I peed in my pants. Now I'll get punished in the grave. Oof, oof, oof. As you see here, this is from chapter punishment in the grave because of backbiting and soiling one's clothes with urine. The prophet once passed by two graves and said, they, the deceased persons in those graves are being tortured. Same hadith basically. Again, Sahih al-Bukhari. And how, how this, this punishment of the grave guy started in Islam? What is the reason for it? Here's the reason for it. This is from Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. Al-Bukhari. Hadith number 63, 66. 63, 66. Here's the reason why it, this punishment of, of the grave was adopted in Islam. Because of the Jews. Read with me. Two old ladies from among the Jewish ladies entered upon me and said so who is saying this Aisha the mother of the believers the baby bride of Muhammad yes the baby bride of Muhammad reporting this so she, she, she's saying two ladies Jewish ladies entered upon her and said the dead are being punished in their graves so these nasty Jews are saying the dead are punished in their grave but Aisha look what Aisha is saying she's too smart she not, she's noticing these Jewish ladies are trolling her. They are lying. But I thought they were telling a lie. So Aisha noticed that, you know, they're playing with me, right? Remember, guys, why the Jews are doing this? Because every time Muhammad heard something from the Jews, a legend story, a lie, an invention, anything, he put it in Islam. He adopted it in Islam. It became an Islamic concept. So the Jews were telling this for the first time ever, right? Aisha never heard of this. Uh, so she's saying they are telling a lie and did not believe them. So she didn't believe them, right? In the beginning. They, she know that th these people are lying to me, right? One day went away. So when the two Jewish ladies went away, and the Prophet entered upon me. So Muhammad came to her. She told him, I said, Aisha saying, Oh Allah's Messenger, Allah praying on him. Two old ladies, two Jewish ladies came to me. And she told him the whole story. She sh so Aisha told her husband the whole story. He said, now look what the reaction of Muhammad is, guys. Pay attention. Are you with me, guys? Give me one if you are with me. So Muhammad saying, they told the truth. Did you catch it? They told the truth. So Muhammad is confirming the lie of the Jews. Show me one Jew. I challenge any Muslim to show me one Jew who believes in this. Show me one Jew who believes in the punishment on the grave. So he actually believed in the lie of the Jews who were trolling Aisha, lying to her. Aisha was too smart to believe it. She, she said, this is a lie. They are telling lies. But Muhammad said, they told the truth. So everything he was hearing in the back, he was listening. Everything the Jews say, it must be the truth. They are Jews. They, they, must, they, they must be telling the truth. And till today, because of this incident, guys, because of this incident, the Muslims are scared to death of the punishment of the grave which is a jewish invention to lie to muhammad and aisha it's a lie it's a play from the jews always the jews man always the jews it's always the jews so actually jews guys have a large impact on muhammad's life right and everything the jews tell muhammad he immediately believes it's the truth Whenever they tell a legend story, child story, Muhammad put it in Quran. Muhammad speaks about it in the hadith. So Muhammad says, they told the truth. The dead are really punished to the extent that all the animals hear the sound resulting 
from their punishment. So guys, according to Muhammad, the animals here, people, the Muslims, the Abduls, who are suffering from Abdulism, when they die and they are getting punished in their grave, the animals will hear it. Right? The animals will hear it. So you, when you have a cat or a dog, he will hear Muslims getting punished in their graves. I kid you not. This is a true story, guys. Don't laugh. So yeah, the ants, you know, when you have ants, even the ants. Even the ants. So since then, I always saw him seeking refuge with Allah from the punishment of the grave in prayers. I mean, question Muslims. Why did the Jews have to tell about this for the first time? And why from that moment on, <laughs> Lord have mercy. from that moment on, Muhammad, since then, look, it says since then, Aisha saw Muhammad seeking refuge with Allah from the punishment of the grave. Why not before? Is there, guys, do you notice something fishy here? Why not before this incident? Hello, welcome, uh, and God bless for the people who just joined. Guys, don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button, please. You know how YouTube works by now. Also, click on the notification bell. That's very important these days to receive notification when we go live or upload new videos. So as you see, guys, you see, one of the biggest reasons is urine. So when you pee yourself, you don't clean, you'll get punished in the grave. And it's nothing but a Jewish invention. And Muhammad believing it, saying it's the truth. And from that moment on, from this moment on, Muhammad started to seek refuge from the punishment of the world. So even Muhammad was scared to death from the punishment of the world. What happened with me if I die? A brother, sister. Uh, guys, I can't do it like Zakir Naik. I mean, I... Uh, no, CPH is much better than me. Brother, sister, you, you Muslims really actually believe in this, man? Come on, guys. The Jews were telling the lie, and now you have to believe in this? They told the truth? I'll give you $1,000 if you can show me a Jew who believes in the punishment of the grave. I'll give you $1,000. I can't do it, Zakir Knight, guys. Sorry, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> guys, I want to play for you a nice video. A nice video. By a sheikh called R-C-S-A-W-H. Right? He's going to show you how the... Muslims actually believe what will happen in their grave. So this is a sheikh called R C S A W H. Okay, that's his name, Sheikh R C S A W H. So let me play the video for you guys. Sit and enjoy. Don't forget about the popcorn and the cookies that need to be crumbled during this video. Enjoy the true facts that are mentioned in this video. Right. Sit tight, fasten your seatbelt, and enjoy. The deceased body and is carried to his grave, the righteous soul will say, Bring me closer! Bring me closer! And the wicked one will say, Oh my Allah! Where are they taking me? After the funeral prayer on the deceased is over, the grave will say, I am the house of exile. I am the house of loneliness, I am the house of dust, I am the house of worms. And as the hadith says, if the human is placed inside his grave and his friends start to leave, his soul returns back to him until he hears their footsteps fade away. And then suddenly two angels appear to him. Their names are Munkar wa Manakir. And they help the deceit to sit straight and start testing him. So if the deceit was a true Muslim believer, they will ask him, Who is your Lord? My Lord is Allah. What is your religion? My religion is Islam. 
who is the man who sent to you he is Rasulullah and how do you know I read the book of Allah and I believe in him and accepted him so he finally passed the exam and he will be rewarded with the gift of Jannah and an overwhelming voice from above will say oh my righteous Abdul quickly open for him the doors of Jannah then a man with beautiful appearance come by and says I am your righteous deeds but for the kafir the angels come and ask him who is your lord oh, uh, uh, I don't know Madri what is your religion uh, uh, I don't know who is the man who lived among you uh, 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 I don't know Madri and the angels tell him you don't know and you failed your test and the poor man failed his exam and test and the punishment of the grave starts and a voice from heaven says he lied bring down fire upon him and the angel starts to hammer him down with a big sledgehammer such amazing big hammer that if you throw it down it can break a mountain into small pieces of rocks and dust and the kafir screams and crimes from the pain and suffering so loud that all creation can hear him except mankind and jinn and he is struck down until he turns to dust and Allah turns him back to normal and the angels strike him down with a final blow and his grave starts to close around him until he limbs crushed and earth is commanded to swallow him and it swallows him completely and a snake crawl in his grave and a bold snake called Sarban al Akra and the snake starts to eat his flesh from head to toe and a man appears from out of nowhere with an ugly face filthy clothes and a bad smell and he says I'm your wicked deeds and then his place in fire is shown to him <laughs>
a dua, a supplication, there is one great surah that the Prophet told us, والسلام, that whoever recites it when going to bed, it is composed of 30 ayah. If you recite it every night when you go to bed, Allah Azza wa will exempt you from the punishment or the torment. Brother, sister, if you recite Surah Al-Mulk, which is this chapter, that means you are going to be staying safe from Azab Al-Qabr, punishment of the grave. Muslims, really? So when you recite this, uh, this, these 30 ayahs, I mean there are 30 ayahs, right guys? 1, 2, 3, all the way to the 30th. That means you are saved. And you can keep soiling yourself, you can pe still peeing in your panties. I mean, sounds convincing, right? A brother, sister. I mean, come on guys, man, wake up Muslims. Even, even my six-year-old cousin or nephew will not believe in this nonsense. Really Muslims? Wake up man, what's wrong with you man? It really, it really makes me sad that Muslims actually started to believe because started to believe in the punishment of the, of the grave because of the lies of the Jews, right? Two Jewish ladies entering to the house of Aisha and saying, yeah, the dead are punished in their grave. And this is why, because of the, her, their lies, you have to believe from now on in something called the punishment the, in the grave, that two angels will come to you and start to question you, ask you three questions and if you fail the test they will start to hammer you down what kind of nonsense is this guys and show me like i said i challenge you to show me one jew in the complete history of the jews who believes in this nonsense you got it from the jews right you muslims according to aisha according to her hadith from the mouth of muhammad It comes from the Jews. Muhammad never heard of this before. Aisha never heard of this before. And she's saying they were telling a lie. Wake up, man. Why are you still in the matrix, Muslims? Wake up. You have been living in a dream world, my friend. Are you going to take the red pill or the blue pill? It's on you. Take it or leave it. Wake up Muslims, please, drop Islam, drop the lies of Muhammad, and please come back home to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Stop believing in nonsense. Only because of the Imams, this lie is kept alive. Wake up please, for your own salvation. Don't believe in the lies of Shiyukh who have been lying to you your whole life. Wake up, please. Do we have any Ustaz? Do we have any Imam who dares to call me? My Skype is open, guys. My Skype is open. Do we have any Ustaz? Do we have any Shaykh? Hello? Do we have any Muslim? Mean. I just closed all my uh, screens anyway. Accidentally, I closed my all my screen. Anyway, do we have any sheikh? Do we have any ustaz? Hello? Hello? Do we have any Muslim who has the courage or the knowledge to call me? 
think we're out of Muslims today, guys. What can we do? What can we do? Is there anyone here in the text who has a question about today's teaching or any question about something that bothers you or uh, that you are confused about, question about Islam? Now it's the time, guys. Come on. Clean desktop. You like my desktop? Man. <laughs> Why are the Muslims hiding? I mean, come on, man. We have been spanking your prophet. And you are silent? I wonder why the Imams don't call us, guys. I wonder why. I mean, you, you heard the, the, or you saw the, anyone saw the documentary of the BBC about Muta'a, how the Imams are selling women for money, pimping out on money, uh, pimping out women for money. Muslims, these are Muslims, selling Muslims, Muslim girls. You have to watch it, guys. It's disgusting, I know, but you have to watch it. You know, I, I wonder how Muslims dare to call BBC, right? How they dare to call BBC. How dare you to call BBC and complain about it? I mean, it's your Quran, man. It's in your Quran. Chapter 4, Ayah 24. It's in your Quran. Right? Chapter 24, Ayah 24. So why are you complaining, Muslims? To the BBC? Huh? So what these Imams are doing is halal. Right? Yeah, they are, the Muslims are feeling disgusted because of it, right? But it's there in their most holiest book. It's in the Quran. Why are you such munafiqun? Why are you such hypocrites, Muslims? So what your imams are doing is halal. So muta is in the Quran. Now here comes the thing, guys. Why do Shia still practice muta? I mean, show me one ayah that abrogates this ayah. Nowhere in the Quran you find an ayah that came later to abrogate this ayah. So the abrogation is nowhere to be found in the Quran. Who abrogates it for the Sunnis? Omar. Omar is the one who abrogated this ayah when Omar became a caliph after Abu Bakr. When Omar became the second caliph, he forbade the muta of Allah. Allah is doing or permitting you to commit muta, to do muta, then all of a sudden Muhammad dies, Abu Bakr is in command, Abu Bakr dies, Omar comes in command, and he forbids the muta of Allah. I mean, question Muslims, since when is Omar a prophet? Last time I checked, Muhammad said, I am the seal of the prophets. I am the last of the prophets. So now, Omar, becomes the second and last prophet so who gave the authority to Omar to abrogate the muta of Allah that we can find in chapter 4 ayah 24 and this is why guys Shia still practice it because they reject Omar they curse Omar they spit Omar out they curse him every time together with Aisha together with Abu Bakr right together with Hafsa and many other companions of the prophet Right? This is why in that documentary you see the Shia still practicing it. The Imams allowing it. The Imams being pimps. Selling out their Muslim women. Because it's halal. I challenge any Muslim to show me one ayah that abrogates this ayah. And how do you 
except that Umar abrogates the Quran of, uh, of Allah. You Muslims are nothing but hypocrites, I tell you. So who are the real Muslims guys? Shia, not Sunni. I challenge any Sunni Muslim to show me an ayah from the Quran that abrogates muta. Right? Because Omar is not a prophet. How can Omar abrogate the muta of Allah in the Quran? That doesn't add up, guys. That doesn't make sense, right? So, guys, muta of Allah is in the Quran, right? And not only the muta, also in the same ayah, you are allowed to take sex slaves, as you see here in front of you, right? What a disgusting, filthy sex religion this cult is. It's not even a religion. It's not worthy to be called a religion, right? It's a man-made cult created by Muhammad for Muhammad and his army of thugs, right? Yeah, and everything is about power and money and sex, right? Do we have any Muslim? Is there any Muslim sheikh? I think we are out of uh, Muslims today, guys. We have more than 100 people watching. More than 100 people watching. Are you telling me that we are out of Muslims? We have, I mean, we have many dislikes, right? How many dislikes do we have, Out guys? of Muslims? We have one dislike. That means we have at least one Abdul watching. All right? Is there any question in the chat, guys? If someone is saying, how dare Omar abrogates muta of Allah? I get very angry if I don't get my muta. <laughs> yeah, what, sorry, my friend. What can we do? We can't go back in time to slap Omar around for abrogating the muta of Allah. I mean, Omar, who are you, man? Should we say from now on, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on Omar? Allah praying on Omar now? Because he is the prophet, the actual prophet of Islam. He became the seal of the older prophets, not Muhammad. Yeah, guys, do you, if you have any Muslim friends or you know Muslims, let them call me. There was a Muslim guy on Discord, but it seems he chickened out, you know, acting big. I mean, now it's the time. Finally, Europe Christian is live. You can call me. You can refute me. You can debate me. I'm here. Silence me. We are spanking your fake prophet left and right. We are spanking your fake man-made code left and right. And now you are afraid to call. You know, when you sit on Discord, they have big mouth. They flood, flood you with all kind of text, you know, being text terrorists. But the moment, right, we go live, we open up our Skype, no one dares to call. What a shame, man. Talk is cheap in text, right guys? Talk is cheap in text. Call me. Right? Yeah, their imams say to not to call. So their imams say don't call them. Yeah, you know why, Centurion? You know why? Because actually, it's the, in the Islamic teaching, right? You know? It's in the Islamic teaching. But, you know, sometimes... You will find a Muslim sheikh or, or imam or an abdu who is suffering from abdulism. They will get the courage anyway to call us. So, you know. You know. And I find it strange when you have the Quran 
or any Islamic source saying you have to deal with much respect when you talk with the people of the book. So when they curse us and insult us, guys, they are actually going against their Islamic teaching. All right? Tell on 9.5. What about 9.5? What about it? What's your question about 9.5? Let me open it up for you. Yeah, Surah at tawbah the chapter of the sword, as you see, chapter of the sword, right? Which they call the repentance. This is 9.5. What's your question, my friend, about it? Then when the sacred months have passed, kill the idolaters, the pagans, wherever you find them, and take them captive and besiege them and prepare for them each ambush but if they repent and establish worship so when they become muslims then pay zakat right then leave their way free lo allah is forgiving right so as you see guys you have to kill them if they don't convert to islam right only the jews and the christians are allowed to stay alive right Remember, we have been teaching you about 928 and 929, right? Muhammad starts to forbid anyone who is not a Muslim, who is unclean. It, you know, the word is not unclean. It's actually d very, very dirty, right? Very disgusting, very dirty. That's including the Jews and the Christians and all the pagans, right? There we are not allowed till today. We are not allowed to, to come near Mecca or Medina, right? And then Muhammad forbids to also trade with anyone in Mecca, right? So, but the Muslims started to complain. If you fear poverty, you know, the Muslims started to complain to, uh, to Muhammad. Muhammad, what have you done? Our markets will be closed, right? What have you done? He said, don't worry, be happy. You will get the bounty from the Jews and the Christians. So if the pagans don't convert, you capture them. They don't want to convert, kill them. Right? You just read it from 9.5, right? And then he commands, fight against those who have been given the scripture, including the Jews and the Christians, who are not believing in Allah nor the last day. And forbid not that which Allah had forbidden by his messenger and follow not the religion of until they pay the jizya. Right? Nothing called tribu tribute. It's jizya, right? Mafia protection, man. So, and if you don't pay as a Jew or a Christian, you don't pay jizya, they will kill you. They will take your women and money. You want me to look at the hadith? Okay, let's see. Let me see. Is this the hadith, my friend? Is this the one? Centurion. Just tell me, is this the one you, you are telling me about? Okay, okay. Sahih Muslim, guys, 630. Sahih Muslim, hadith number 630. This re Al Bara B. Azab reported this verse was revealed. Guard the prayers and the Asr prayer. We recited it in this very way, so long as Allah desired. Allah then abrogated it, and it was revealed. Guard the prayers and the middle prayer. A person who was sitting with Shaqiq, one of the narrators in the chain of Tramida, said, Now implies the Asr prayer. Upon this, al bara said, I've already informed you how this verse was revealed and how Allah abrogated and Allah knows best. So yeah, Allah changing his mind. What else is new, my friend? Allah revealing an ayah, then removes it. Seems like 
Allah is a child in a candy store, right? Changing his mind whenever he finds another delicious candy, right? Yeah, Allah brigades Asr with Asr, yeah. Right? Well, that's what uh, Islam teaches, my friend. Allah abrogates an ayah with a similar or better ayah. So he abrogates, I mean, Allah, question, Allah. I mean, it's Muhammad, we know it's Muhammad. Why would you send an ayah and replace it with the same ayah? That doesn't make sense. I mean, why would you send something and replace it with similar thing? That does not make sense. If I do that at work, guys, if I do that at work, my boss will fire me. That means if I'm working, I'm doing a job and it will cost me one hour. Then the next day I will do the same work, exactly the same work. And it will again take me an hour. So that means I'm doing double work. So my boss at work have to pay me double for the same work that I've done. That doesn't make sense, Muslims. Wake up. This cannot be God. Muhammad here was simply forgetting ayahs. And when someone came to him, he said, Hey, uh, Muhammad, do you remember this? I said, yeah, yeah, I remember it. Allah replaced it uh, with the same ayah. I mean, Muhammad was simply forgetting ayahs. And that happens when you are nothing but a fake prophet. No divine revelation, no nothing. Right? Right? Why would you replace something with the same thing, with the similar same thing? That does not make sense, Muslims. Please leave this cult, man. Leave this cult. Please come back home to Jesus. No one can save you. There is nothing called Azab al Qabr. There is nothing called punishment of the grave. Wake up, Muslims. If you care about your salvation, you need to wake up. Please come back home to Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Every knee will bow and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Today we prove to you that Muhammad is nothing but a liar and a deceiver. Lying about the prophets, right? That their bodies will not decay. Oh boy, we have spanked Muhammad and refuted him, right? Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? It's awfully quiet on Skype today, guys. Awfully quiet. I think it's one of those days, people. What can we do? It's one of those days. Is there any other question? Do we have any Muslim? I don't know, Michelle de Vries. I don't know. Uh, Rob, is it true? Ilah in Arabic means God. And El, since all Muslims claim is the God. Should Allah be actually El Ilah? Uh, born again, uh, basically, Ilah, Ilah, the word Ilah means God. So Ilah means God, right? So when we ask Muslims, what does Allah mean? They say it means God. <laughs> so is it Ilah or Allah? Which one of the two is it, Muslims? So actually, Allah is the name of the moon idol of the Muslims. Right? It's his name. And El means in Hebrew, God. So it's actually God La. That's what Allah means, right? Did you catch it? Hope you uh, hope you are satisfied with my answer.
Is there any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Guys, please don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button. Also click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. I think we are out of Muslims, guys, today. Lalit Prakash is asking, if the Muslims and their Imams and leaders were really afraid of punishment after death and seek salvation, they should be the one educating Muslims about real Islam. Why won't they? Well, they are trying, my friend. They are. We just played a video for you, right? They're trying. They, they are actually uh, are making them really afraid, you know. They are, they are warning them, you know, watch out. Ooh! Azab al-Qabr is really something important. You need to know, don't pee in your panties because you'll be punished in your grave. We showed you the hadith, right? Don't ever pee in your panties in Islam. That's one of the biggest reasons why you will be punished in your grave. A brother, sister, don't do it, right? Don't do it. Even Zakir Naik agrees, right? A brother, sister, peeing in your pants is one of the sins that can be cause of the greatest punishment in the grave, right? Where is Christian prince when you need him? A brother, sister. Oof, oof, oof. Do we have any Muslim? P that is the thing that will get you into the punishment of the grave. The angels will hammer you down because you are peeing in your pants. Lord have mercy. You really Muslims really believe in this nonsense? There's nothing in the world that is not much worse than peeing your pants. I mean, come on, man. There's no human in this earth who did not pee in his pants. If you're going to say no, you're lying. So that means every person, according to Islam, every person will be punished in his grave because we are all soiling ourselves. I mean, let's be real. We all have been children. We all peed our, in our pants. So that means we are going to be, get punished. <laughs> Lord, <I miss. laughs> oh man. How can you be in Islam? I mean Muslims, we have 1.8 billion Muslims. That's what they said. Who believe in this nonsense? I mean you really must be suffering from Abdulism to believe in this. You have to be completely brainwashed. Man, if I was a Muslim, guys, and I never heard about this, about Azab al-Qabr, being punished in your grave, if I really, this, this was the first time, I would have not stayed a Muslim for a split second. Who believes in this nonsense in 2019? Wake up, it's almost 2020. Wake up, people. Wake up. This is madness, exactly. Eh, why is the Sheikh? Because it's a huge business, my friend. This is why Shiyukh are laughing. It's big business for them. I mean, you saw the documentary, right, about Muta. We just mentioned it earlier. It's huge business to be an Imam like this guy who calls himself Mufti Mek. They, he, this guy that you see, is, he's allowed, he has the authority to issue fatwas, right? 
This guy is filthy rich. Lord knows what kind of car is he, he's driving. His son is maybe driving in a big Mercedes. It's huge business for these people. This is why they are keeping these kind of lies alive. Do you remember what? Let me show you guys. Do you remember that, uh, that Sheikh from Egypt? What was his name again? Mm, just a second. Bear with me, guys. What was the name of the Abdul again? I think his name was Yusuf, Sheikh Yusuf Al Qaradawi. I think it, it was him, right? You remember what he said, guys? Do you remember what he said? You can read it, right? If they had got rid of apostasy punishment in Islam, Islam would not exist today. Sorry for the typo, I know. This was the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. He's, he's I mean, he's honest. Dr. Yusuf Al-Qaradawi. He is honest. He said, if apostasy punishment, that means if you leave Islam, and we know what the punishment of apostasy in Islam, it's death, they will kill you. If it did not exist, Islam would have died long time ago. Long time ago. Right? Long time ago. It's not me saying this, right? This guy is already dead, by the way. He, he, he does not live anymore. He's being honest. There would have not been one Muslim in 2019 now. It was already gone. It, was, it would be gone. So they are afraid. Islam is nothing but fear tactics. Put fear in the hearts of people and they will stay put. Right? Islam is a death cult. Put fear in their hearts. Fear for punishment. Fear for punishment of the grave. And they will stay put. Right? They will stay Muslims. It's the fear that is in, heart of, in the heart of these people. The, this is why they are still Muslims. It's fear. Fear that your parents, your uncles, your cousins might kill you if you leave Islam. I know a lot of Muslims. I have spoken to a lot of Muslims who actually don't believe in Islam, but they are still in Islam because they are afraid. Fear tactics. Muhammad knew how to deal with Muslims. Remember the story when Muhammad died, guys? When Muhammad died, you remember the story about the Ridda Wars? The Ridda Wars, guys. Muhammad dies, right? Muhammad dies, and immediately, immediately, Muslims started to leave Islam left and right, right? Then Abu Bakr is in command. You see, you see in front of you, right? Muhammad dies, Abu Bakr is in command, and Muslims started to leave left and right. Many false prophets start to come, right? Proclaiming that they are prophets like Muhammad, liars. Right? Chaos in the caliphate. Immediately after the death of Muhammad. And then, Muhammad, and then Abu Bakr re starts the Ridda Wars on the Muslims. The ex-Muslims in this case. Right? These people knew as long Muhammad was alive. As long Muhammad was alive. They feared that, they, that he would kill them. Cut off their heads. Right? The moment he, Muhammad dies, Abu Bakr comes in command, all these people start to leave Islam, one by one. Huge! By the thousands, they started to leave Islam. I wonder why, guys. They knew this guy is a fake prophet, man. He's nothing but a warlord. So fear tactics is what is keeping Islam alive. This guy is honest. Right? This guy is honest. 
Fear tactics. Guys, I hope you had a nice time today. I didn't want to stay very long, but we are more than our life. So I think it was a nice day. Too, too bad Muslims are too scared to call me today. It's one of those days, right? The shiyukh and imams are hiding. Where are the ustaz when you need them, right? Where are they? Why are they not defending Islam from us? Right? So guys, thank you for watching. Like I said, don't forget to subscribe. Smash that like button like it's possessed by jinns. Don't also forget to click on the notification bell to receive notification when we go live. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Stay safe. God bless your families and loved ones. And see you again next time. Jesus is Lord. Islam is nothing but a death, satanic, sex cult. Thank you for watching and God bless.